This edition of the Ridley Report is brought to you by Freaking.com. Sorry, can you check on those and make sure we have them? A recorded interview ban at this private property Rand Paul function in New Hampshire soured me on the con- uh, the Kentucky senator. A bit. But, even I have to admit, he has mostly exceeded my expectations in office. And I sometimes think people are being a little too hard on him from the libertarian community. Sure, we can come up with this or that thing he's said that doesn't sound very libertarian, or some votes that don't seem very libertarian. But Paul is the opposite of the normal Fed senator in more ways than one. And that's good. Not only does he tend to vote in a pro-liberty manner. And then I decided, you know what, rather than just saunter off, I better just go ahead and announce that I'm not going to shake his hand. Where most of them vote in a pro-authority manner. He's also opposite in the sense that most senators sound pretty good when they talk, but then their voting patterns are completely authoritarian. Well, well, I'm being a little bit generous. Some senators don't even sound good when they talk. But uh, anyway, Paul is the opposite. He, he sort of, he's sort of, from the beginning, has sounded conservative more than libertarian. In many cases, he does. But his voting record has not been some kind of drastic departure from his speech. He's not like Reagan, who talked libertarian and voted in many cases, or acted in many cases authoritarian. He's at least as good as what he seemed to be saying he was going to be. He's done his pro-liberty filibusters. He's made his pro-liberty stands. And it's all adding up to him being possibly the front-runner for the presidency in 2016. My hunch is that inside... Paul is more libertarian than he's letting on, and he has decided, in order to maybe save the country, he's going to have to limit the libertarianism in his rhetoric and in his voting patterns. I guess he's a kinder, gentler version of the Japanese general in uh, Ralph, Peter, uh, Ralph Peter's novel, uh, The War in 2020. Uh, in that novel, Peters describes a, a relatively good man who sits in a position of authority over an aggressive Japanese army. He does various things that are human rights violations, but he does them because he believes if he, if he does less, that he'll be removed from office and someone worse than him will replace him. So he stays there with the goal of preventing the atrocities that his replacement would commit. Doesn't justify it morally, but it's just a good thing to know about the character before you judge him. He's in this position of power, he knows he's hated, he knows he's doing things that are wrong, but for good or ill, he's got a goal of sparing people certain types of abuses. Although Peters is a raving pro fed nationalist. He describes that Japanese general as the most sympathetic character in his book. And to me, Rand Paul is the most sympathetic character in the U.S. Senate. It's kind of like back in the days when uh, John Sununu Jr. was a senator from New Hampshire. Well, that was great compared to everything we've had since uh, in New Hampshire in those Senate seats. But a lot of, a lot of liberty folk really didn't like John Sununu Jr., I don't know, it's a fine line. We don't want to just kowtow to politicians who are saying one thing and doing another, or to politicians who really are voting in favor of cruel policies. But we should judge them in in context. And sometimes maybe even withhold judgment a little bit. There's also the reality that the best way to make someone change their behavior is to tell them how much you appreciate the things they get right. Get them to do that more often as opposed to just trying to stop the bad things that they're doing. So with that, Senator Paul. Anyhow, 
I'm just happy that I'm able to say some good things about a senator. I would just love to be able to go back to the days when I was pro-U.S. Because there was a time when the U.S. really was the relative good guy. It wasn't that long ago. More Rand Pauls in the Senate, more Justin Amashes in the House of Representatives, well, you know, it'll push us slightly in that direction. And someday, there will be a chief executive in the United States. Maybe he will be not running the United States, but just a state uh, or an independent country that was part of the former United States. There will be such a person who will apologize for what this country has been doing over the last 10 years. And welcome Ed Snowden back in as a hero. That's American history. Although American history may be ending before long. Maybe I should say U.S. history to be replaced by American history. Driving in circles around Central Keene, I hurl both insults angry and mean against the activists from Free Keene. Uh, who wander around thinking as though they were free and even though they aren't hurting me I will hate them hatefully urging their appearance in the penitentiary although that expense would be charged to me I'm starting to feel Somewhat confusedly.